Are we live? Are we good? I think we're live. All right. Um, welcome, guys, to the live stream. I'll just see how many of you there are in here. Um, but thank you for joining me for another live stream. Uh, I don't have much of a plan for today. Um, so I just thought we could hang out, we could do some question and answers, we could deal with any pressing issues that you have. Um, I thought I would take a break from story reading for a moment because I'm actually working on the one that we just finished. Um, I'm working on an ending and I'm thinking about an ending. Uh, I haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm also thinking maybe the ending is fine as it is and it just leaves it open-ended. But we'll see what happens. Um, but if you guys have any questions or any concerns, let me know. Uh, this morning I fell asleep at about 4am, not entirely sure why. Uh, didn't have, like, this is probably the first caffeinated drink that I'm having in a while. Um, but my sleep pattern's all messed up, so I'm gonna have to start scheduling things in again. Um, but welcome, Junk Shop Library, welcome Ish. Um, how are you guys doing? Um, I'm, I've been having bizarre dreams again, but I've been trying to figure out what they mean exactly, uh, because it's kind of creepy. So last night I had a dream that I had gotten into an arranged marriage and it was extremely elaborate. Um... And this morning I had a dream that I was shaving my whole face with a razor and it was like leaving these horrible marks. Um, so I don't know what any of that means, but if, feel free to interpret if you like. I can go into more detail. Um, Ish, I'll see you soon. Definitely go for a run. Cabin fever is no fun at all. So we'll, we'll, see, you, we'll see you around, dude. Uh, have a good time. Um, but... Yeah, I stayed up until about 4am, I saw a dumb video on Twitter, decided to edit it and post it, um, and it's it's kicking off, but no one knows what the context of that entire video is, and I find that absolutely hysterical. Uh, welcome Julie LaVoice, thank you for joining us. Julie LaVoice and Junk Shop, you, you guys have got to be like my biggest fans, you're always around whenever I upload or premiere or anything. Um, but thank you for coming along. Um, welcome, Halima Ibrahim. Um, yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the weird dreams are about. I used to have a lot of them, but my brain's been pretty clear for the last two or three weeks. I haven't really had any crazy dreams, but the last two nights I've been having crazy dreams, and I'm just trying to figure out what the hell they mean. Um... I've done a series on my channel about where I read scary dreams that I used to have. Um, and I find them fascinating because I think that they... I, I think that your brain has a weird way of telling you things. Also, it's just down to interpretation what they mean. Um, but I am having more sort of family-related dreams as of recently. Um, but last night's one was just pure horror. Like, I couldn't quite understand where the hell where the hell any of it was going it was just me standing in a mirror just raking a razor over my face um and it was like all down my neck and it was really fucking creepy i didn't know what it was about uh welcome rnnn you normally normally you're always late to my streams but welcome <laughs> someone's on time today uh Junk shop library, that made that even funnier, not knowing the context and seeing it at random in the middle of the night here. Uh, yeah, I. the thing was, so if, if I give context to it, it's going to make it less... It's going to make it less funny. But the context of it... I, well, I don't understand the context of the crying. The crying is just pure uh, garbage. Like, that man is known for crying at everything. But the context of it, I think, is that in um, in Islamic mythos, that's what I'm going to call it now, in the Islamic mythos, after you die, 
um, there's this whole trial of the grave thing where God or the angels will test you in the grave and you'll be asked three questions. And, and the three questions are the ones that the guy asked Imran. Um, who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who is your messenger? And I think what he was trying to demonstrate is that if you can't move your lips, then then you can't say the words. But like, that's common sense. Um, it, it, like, who knew you needed your lips to speak? But also in the grave, you're going to be a spirit. So I don't understand why you would have a problem moving your lips. So uh, I don't know. It's just, it's awful. It's stupid. I don't understand it. Um, but yeah, I, I saw it in the middle of the night because Ali Malik had retweeted it and I couldn't resist. Usually if I see a video of those two idiots on my screen, I just scroll by and I don't bother. But because Ali Malik had commented on it and he was talking about like the trials of the grave, um, I think in Arabic it's called Adhab al-Qabr, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, I couldn't stop thinking how funny it would be if I just took that whole thing out of context and make, made them look, well, they look ridiculous regardless, because even when people see it with the full edit and without the cut, it looks ridiculous to somebody who isn't a Muslim. Even some Muslims, like I showed some of my friends and they were like, what is this? What, why is he crying? Why, why should any of us be crying? Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Dumb people do dumb things. So if you want me to edit some uh, ridiculous clips out of context, just um, send them to me. I'm more than happy to do that. Um, just get in through the live chat. Uh, for any, uh, any of you who are just joining, welcome. We're just having a chill hangout today. Um, Halima Ibrahim says, I usually don't uh, dream at all. Most of the time I black out and then wake up. Is this just me? I find that my most sort of restful nights are when I don't dream at all. I'm a pretty restless dreamer because I, I don't sleepwalk, but I definitely do. Have you ever had that feeling where you like, you feel like you're falling in a dream and you just wake yourself up? because it's, it's just like a reaction. I'm a pretty restless sleeper if I'm dreaming, but if I don't, well, if I, if I don't remember any of my dreams, I find that I've slept the best. But last night I couldn't sleep because it was so damn hot in, in, in this house. I turned down, I had to turn down the thermostat. I had to open all the windows. I brought my fan out. Like it was so warm last night. Could not sleep until 4 a.m. Not until I had completely exhausted myself by editing an, a ridiculous clip of Dawa Man crying at nothing. Um, Julie Lavoie says, it helps that we live in the same apartment and it helps that you're awesome. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Um, Paul says, I like your hair. Thank you. Uh, I like it too. Uh, RNNN says, that sounds like an awful dream. I must woke up and notice the live stream. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad you're here. It's always a good time to have you here. Um, you don't need to be sorry that I had an awful dream because it's it's not something that shakes me anymore. Um, I'm pretty used to dreaming horrible things. <laughs> but it was a creepy dream because I don't think I've ever had... Usually in my dreams I have a level of control, but in this dream it just felt like I was watching me taking myself apart, which I think is my brain trying to tell me something. Um, so maybe I'll write a piece about it. I don't know yet, but it was just me staring at me and just like, it started off as, I guess, like a method of self care. Like when you shave, it's, it's like a, it's like a way of taking care of yourself and a way of grooming. Right. But then it just became almost like destructive. I don't know. I think it's a very interesting, it, it, usually, usually I interpret it as my brain trying to tell me something. Um, but maybe I can take something for it. I don't know. Um, Paul, do you remember what hadith those three questions were in? No, but you can probably look them up and you can find them. Uh, Tweedledee says, who else tried to say it with their mouth closed? Well, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Sound has to come out of your mouth, so it's not going to work out. It just isn't. Try saying anything with your mouth closed. It doesn't quite work. Um, 
Paul says, you TikTok? Uh, no, since Armin started doing it, I've fully lost respect for him. Um, we, <laughs> I'm going to stick to my platforms, YouTube and Twitter. <laughs> ASDF uh, Wajibul Mantik, uh, welcome. Uh, I, I've seen you in a couple of my streams. How are you doing? Um, and I hope you're doing well since the last one. Uh, Laura Joseph says, how is mental health do going during this lockdown and are you coping well? Um, it's been going up and down in the last week, if I'm being completely honest. Um, the last week I've been trying to keep off uh, social media. I've been trying to just let my, let my depression run around. I think it sometimes just needs some playtime. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, I don't know if it makes sense to other people who have depression, but like once it hits me, there's very little that I can do besides just sort of let it run its course. Um, so I think yesterday and today, I'm kind of at the end of it, but I think Monday and Tuesday, and I'm not entirely sure what the trigger was, um, it felt quite overbearing. It was just me watching hundreds of reruns of Family Guy. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it's, I think Monday and Tuesday, it kind of hit me. Well, first of all, I, there was some personal stuff that I was dealing with, which kind of took me off kilter, which I'm not going to talk about here. But um, aside from that, uh, I think it was, it finally sunk in that I'm quite alone. Because even though I live with housemates, I don't have a close relationship with my housemates. Um, not because they're not good people or they're not nice people, it's just I've never, I've always wanted to treat them like neighbours as opposed to friends and I think I've kind of shot myself in the foot by doing that. Um, but at the same time, after all this is over, I would have wanted everything to resume the way it was in that they're my neighbours, you know. Um, so I think the loneliness kind of struck me and I needed to sit down and reconfigure all of my thoughts and think about how I felt about being alone, how I felt about having, you know, living in this L-shaped attic, um, how I felt about everything. And I think I've more or less gotten over it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, the, the whole being alone thing is a little distressing if we're being completely 100% real. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to say that I haven't had any physical contact in the last 50 days. We've hit the 50 day mark. It's, it's been 50 days in complete isolation. And the way that I've been keeping track of that is by posting these videos. I'm not going to say that there hasn't been any physical contact, but as someone who is quite tactile and as someone who has spent the majority of their life you know, in isolation, you know, away from people, sheltered from people. And even then I had the comfort of like my brothers and sisters and now I don't even have that. I think that it really, really, you know, it gets to me. And I think that that's pretty normal. And I think talking about it helps. I don't know. <laughs> but I did say at the beginning of all of this, I wouldn't be able to fake all this positivity shit. So the last couple of uploads, you probably would have noticed that I'm a little foggy in the brain. Um, but the brain fog is going down. The depression is going down. We're getting back to a work ethic. We're looking pretty, you know, we're, we're getting back to a bit of a schedule. So I think the, the depression has run its course and we're, we're going to go get back onto the right track. Um, I'm uh, just looking at the live chat. Uh, Laura Joseph says, I don't trust TikTok. I heard they take all your information and send it to the CCP. Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Google, Facebook, all of them did that. Um, but I've never, I don't know. I've never, is it crazy that I've never really taken any of that seriously? I just don't, I just don't find it all that important. You know, I'm, I'm just a, everyday Joe that can take all the information they want. <laughs> it doesn't bother me at all. Um, oh. 
My parents got suspicious and forced me to share my room with my crazy religious siblings so I do not eat anything secretly. That sucks, man. Um, oh, I, I, you know, I hope you find a way to cope with all of that. I can't imagine what that's like. I can, I've been through that, but also it, it, it's probably a lot worse now that you can't even go outside. Um, RNNN says, uh, this is a strange coincidence you mentioned, Munkar and Nakir. I recently was looking up some Indian history and found an interesting tidbit from Lahori history. Uh, would you like to hear it? Well, I, I Munkar, Munkar and Nakir are, I think, Indo Aryo names for Kiram and Katibin, which are your the angels that record your deeds, which is also the the whole concept of me taking sin scores. Uh, but the the names and the, this is a weak narration from the hadith are actually Raqib and Atid. But that that narration isn't um well, none of them are technically authentic, but like from the standard, that that narration is considered weak. Um officially officially in the mythos it's it's con it, they are called Kiram and Katibin or uh, the angels that keep your books. Um or the writers of the books, or something, something stupid like that. I don't know. Um, I don't know what that name is, but he says, "Keep fighting, faith." Thank you. Uh, Laura Joseph says, "I get sad and depressed every winter." Um, by the way, any advice on how to deal with heartbreak? <sighs> heartbreak. I feel like it, it gets worse before it gets better. Uh, I've I've had many. It depends what kind of heartbreak. Um, in terms of like romantic heartbreak, it's pretty easy for me to deal with. I get over stuff like that very, very quickly. Um, sometimes I bounce back within 24 hours, sometimes within a week, depending on how long I was with that person. But um, in terms of other kinds of heartbreak, I mean, I have an existential crisis every three months, so it prob probably doesn't come as a surprise. But... Um, I think in terms of like the heartbreak that I face with my family, I'm still kind of getting over. It it definitely takes a lot of time and ignoring it makes it worse. So you have to dig into it, you have to get all your feelings out. Um, moving to another place can sometimes hurt, can sometimes help, but it can also exacerbate it. It it that I've found has has caused many a confusing feeling. <laughs> Uh, it depends on the kind of heartbreak and I think that everyone has their own way of dealing with it and everyone also has their time limit on how long they're willing to deal with it you know I, I've seen people just sort of bury it and you know focus on something else and eventually it's not uh, an issue anymore but I've also found people like myself who will dig into their heartbreak and that's the only way that they can find answers um, because they can't keep running from it and it, it can't just keep interfering with their lives. Um, so that's my take. Um, Wajib al Mantak, any advice for ex Muslims living in Islamic countries with Muslim families? I feel very dangerous giving advice to anyone in that kind of situation because I would need to know the exact kind of situation and even then I would not. I would be very. I would be very, very hard pressed to give you any advice. I think that definitely get in get in contact with the organisations, get in contact with um, the Council of Ex-Muslims of Britain, get in contact with EXMNA, the Ex-Muslims of North America, get in contact with Humanists UK, get in contact with them. They will have better advice than I could give. Um, the advice that I can give is is very, very anecdotal. Um, and, you know, I only know my own circumstances. So I would say, first and foremost, get in contact with them. And my second piece of advice would be that if you're in um, a situation of physical harm, if you're in direct danger, if your life is being threatened, you should get out of that situation as soon as you can, because that situation does not get better. And um, it, it just won't. Um, but as, a, as to any kind of specific advice that I could give to you? Probably not. Um, it. I don't envy your position. I really, really don't. 
Uh, Halima Ibrahim says, I usually get depressed in winter too. I think it's called the winter blues. I love winter. <laughs> winter is my favorite season. Uh, I love the cold. Um, I My depression kind of hits every few months. Um, uh, there's no... I, I should probably make it, like, keep a calendar and see if there's a pattern. Uh, but it is every few months. Winter is some of my happier times. For me, winter is a real time for me to look over my year and see what I've achieved, see what I can improve in the next year. So for me, winter is a great time. But um, I understand that the, not everybody likes the cold. You know, crazy people. Um, Laura Joseph says, I feel like... Sorry. I feel like moving to a warmer country because of it. Maybe southern US, southern Europe, or Africa. Um, if it affects you that much, maybe you should. Uh, I personally want to move to somewhere colder. I want to move to Scotland. I want to move up north. Not anywhere outside of the UK, but Scotland. Um, Andy Fleming, when will you get married in life? I don't value marriage. <laughs> I really don't value marriage. Um, the only reason I would realistically get married was to throw a big party for all of my friends. That's the only reason that I would realistically throw a marriage. I don't... I value commitment and I value... Um, yeah, that's, that's about it. I value commitment and I value love and, you know, keeping that intact. Marriage for me is not that important. Um, and unless I could afford all of it and I could throw a massive party and annoy the hell out of all of my friends, wouldn't really throw one. <laughs> um, L. Ron Hubbard says, can you say Muhammad and Allah and Islam without moving your lips? Don't cry. <laughs> no, because Muhammad has an M in it, two, three M's in it, and you need your lips to, to even pronounce that. Um, RNNN, the Hadiths are full of interesting and funny stuff, also horrible things. Yes, they are. Um, Laura Joseph, do you want kids? Um, I don't think I want kids. Uh, I, I have a very deep-seated fear of me having kids and them being taken away from me because that's already happened. Um, I, I think there's that and there's also sort of the question in my mind as to whether or not I think that producing a child is right. I'm not entirely sure how to explain that, but I don't think that the world needs more people. I think that there are children in, you know, orphanages, in foster homes who who already need care, and I would prefer, I think anyway, to adopt a child as opposed to have one from my own body. But I have decided that if I did want kids, I would only really realistically want one. I don't think I'd want more than one. I think that my need to <laughs> create drama at every step of the way would really, really fuck up my kids. So I would, I would only want the one kid to focus on and maybe raise to adulthood, and then I, I would probably think about having another one. Does that, does that fulfill the answer? Um, Milk Philosopher says, find a family on Discord to substitute for your neighbours. I can't use Discord. I don't know what it is about Discord. Um, it... <laughs> It gives me a headache. Like, I don't know how to use it. I just don't know how to use it. There are too many tabs and too many people in one group. And I don't know how to send friend requests. It's just too much. But, I mean, my family... I have my online family. I have my ex-Muslim family. They're just not in close vicinity to me. Like, I just want a hug. and That's what I'm looking for. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking to see Ali Malik and just shove him into the ground. Um... That's just, it's no hard feelings to him. That's just our entire relationship. Um, Laura Joseph says, on the heartbreak, do you think, uh, sorry, do you think out of sight, out of mind is real? I don't, because I personally have never found that to be helpful. I've only found it 
you know, it's, it's kind of like running away from something that you are not faster than. <laughs> uh, for me, I've always needed to dig into it and, you know, understand my heartbreak and then slowly get over it. I don't believe in out of sight, out of mind out of sight, out of mind, uh, the, the number of times that I've tried, and uh, me being quite emotionally unavailable at some times, um, I've, I've done that quite a few times where I'll just bury all of my issues, and then they'll, they'll just wake up in me later and just want to come out and play, so I would rather, even though I'm not particularly good at addressing things immediately, um, I would rather address them immediately, and get over it and get it done with, you know, have a five minute power cry in the shower with some ice cream and then get out and continue with my day. I know it's not as easy as that. <laughs> I certainly don't do that, but I wish I could. It's, it's, it's something that I've had to learn and I just, I don't believe in ignoring and burying your problems. It, it's just not something that works. Um, Julie Lavoie says, the ex-Muslims of North America is a great organization. They've helped people escape before. Yes, they have. So I would definitely contact them. Um, RNNN says, winter in North America is nice. I'm sure it is, but America doesn't let me into their country. Maybe I'll go to Canada. We'll see. Um, Afroman, did you get a chance to watch Bleach? Not yet. I've been... I have been obsessively wa watching reruns of Family Guy for the last six days. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, uh, I'm just looking at things. Paul, Faye, do you want to move to Scotland? Live out in the sea on a boat? Sail the world? I want to own a boat at one point and I want to learn how to sail, but I'm too scared of the water to live on a boat. Someone offered to have me live on a barge and it, it was really cheaply priced compared to like housing prices here in London because you can live on a barge on the Thames. Um, but, and like the guy who, um, who was moving out, I was talking to him and he was like, no, you know, you don't need to worry about the boat sinking or any kind of floods. Like I've lived here for years and I'm, I'm finally ready to move out and I'm just looking for someone to take my place, but I am truly terrified. <laughs> <laughs> of like just one day there's a hole in the boat and I'm gonna die um I would love to learn to sail though for a countless number of days but it would be nice to have a house on land <laughs> um Julie Lavoie says I want to live in Scotland but it's too cold for junk shop I really really want to just go and live there I really want to buy a house. Like, I've never thought of buying a house. I've never seen the point of it. But if I was going to buy a house, I would want to buy it in Edinburgh in Scotland. It just seems like the perfect place to have a house. For me, anyway. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I enjoy the cold. I really, really like the cold. Uh, if I had a superpower, which superpower would I choose? I could turn back time. No, I wouldn't want. I don't know, I guess teleportation, probably. I'm not entirely sure. When I was younger, I really, really wanted to be a rogue uh, from X-Men. She could just steal other people's powers, but it's not as appealing to me anymore. But I don't know. It would it would probably be something super boring and something that I, I listen. All I want to do throughout my life is annoy all of the people that I love. That is my goal in life. Um, so I would pick a power that that could do that. And teleportation, I think, is a pretty good one. Just appear, steal their handbag, disappear. Um, <laughs> obviously, not take anything from them, but like as a joke, <laughs> it's a prank. <laughs> um, uh, it's too early, so RNN says it's too early to decide for sure if you want kids or not. Also, adoption is a good and a noble thing. Uh, <laughs> Afro Man says you will be the best mom in the world. I don't know about that. There's a lot of neuroticism in here. Um, Laura Joseph says I find kids egocentric, loud and needy. Haha. <laughs> uh, once you have them, your life stops and they start. I think it depends. I think it's it, it all depends on 
um, how you see your trajectory of life. If you are a natural carer, I don't think it would matter too much. For me, I, I know I've always wanted a dog. That's something that I've always wanted. I can't really get one right now because of where I live and also money. Um, <laughs> don't have that Zionist money. Um, but, you know, I am a pretty much a natural carer. I'm pretty independent on my own. But when it comes to even like when I get into a serious relationship, I don't really, really want to be independent and taken care of and just completely separate. I'm a pretty old-fashioned person in a relationship. I, I just want to take care of my everyone around me. I want to take uh, the last relationship I was in, I would take care of my boyfriend, I would take care of his mother, um, and it's, it's really no problem for me. Um, but it depends where you see your life. If you're not a natural carer and you don't you know, you don't have that. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, that's just who you are. Then maybe kids aren't for you. And I don't think that there's a problem with that. But for me, as a natural carer who's thinking about never having children, is like a real dichotomy for me. Because I always, before all of my trauma, I always envisioned myself having children. There was at one point where I thought I would have as many as I could. Um, and um, things have definitely changed since then. Because <laughs> of several tragedies. But, um, it, it depends. <laughs> um, Andy Fleming says, get married to British soldiers who are at Beck Gunman Place. I, I don't know if I would want that kind of a power dynamic in my relationship. <laughs> Also, with your superpowers, what is the first thing you would do? If I could teleport anywhere, I would... I... Okay, if I could teleport anywhere, I would go to the Kitsune village in Japan and just have a wonderful day out. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um... Marcus Tenbeck says, hello everyone, dear Faye, I have a love for painted art and as such I have recently been browsing uh, Kaligat works. Love it. Can you recall some Bengali culture which you think I should explore? I don't know a lot about Bengali culture because I wasn't raised on Bengali culture, unfortunately. I was raised on Islamic culture. Um, so, and when I was younger, my mother was quite invested in Bengali culture. She, she used to um, read a lot of poetry and she had her, she, her whole degree was around uh, Bengali independence and that kind of stuff. So she was very, very proud of our heritage. Uh, but after we became hyper-Islamic, um, all of that kind of got cast aside because it was all considered Hindu culture and you can't imitate the Kafirs and the polytheists and all of that. Um, so I actually don't know a lot about Bengali culture and I need to look into it because I would like to know for myself what I should explore. Um, anyway, uh, Paul says, when you're sad, what ice cream do you prefer? I don't eat. I don't eat when I'm sad. <laughs> Just generally, I don't eat when I'm sad. When I'm when I'm bored, I eat ice cream. When I'm when I'm like mentally drained and I can't think of anything and I'm in a rut, that's when I eat ice cream. And the type of ice cream that I like is generally fruity. Although ice cream is ice cream. I've never found an ice cream that I don't like. Um anyway, uh, uh, uh Keep skipping down, like, all the way to the bottom. Uh, Jendobi Noor, welcome. Um, she says, you can watch Jojo. It is much better than Bleach and much sure. I've been... It, Jojo has been on my radar for a little while because I've heard it's really, really good. Um, I don't watch, like, a shit ton of anime. Uh, I think... There's a part of me that feels like I've grown out of it, and there's a part of me that just can't dedicate so much time to a series. I th like, people have been telling me for years to watch Attack on Titan, and I just can't wrap my head around watching that many episodes. Um, I prefer reading manga. I think that I can get through it better, and I can, like, envision the voices in my head. Um, but, yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. We'll see. Jojo is definitely on my list. Bleach has been on my list for a while, although a lot of Bleach has been inspired by Berserk already. And Berserk is like source material for any like 
um, big sword strong man kind of anime. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I have the source. I don't really need... <laughs> I'll check him out. I'll check him out. If it makes you guys happy, I'll check him out. <laughs> Julie Lavoie says, America is super bigoted. I live in the US. Was born here. I've seen racism get worse in my lifetime. I'm not sure how. <laughs> Because America is, like, one of the most multicultural places in the world. Um, albeit, London is a better melting pot than New York. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I, I don't think I've experienced much racism in my life. There have been small instances of it. Uh, but I just, I, I don't understand how that's happened uh, with America. But, I don't know. Um... Laura Joseph said, wait, what's wrong with London? Nothing. London is the greatest city in the world. It's just too damn hot in the summer. <laughs> London is the greatest city in the world. I've said this in many live streams. London is the greatest city in the world. If I ever move out, if I, if, if I ever leave, if I move to another country, if, if something ever happens, I will never change my mind on the fact that London is the greatest city in the world and all the other major cities can fuck right off. Uh, Milk Philosopher says, I'll show you around when we have time if you want. If you want, I can introduce you to my Discord family. Just say the word. <laughs> that would be nice. But many people have invited me to their Discord family and um, I get overwhelmed because there's too many people talking at the same time. I can't even handle group chats. Like, I can't even handle Twitter or WhatsApp group chats. Like, I'm terrible. I... <laughs> we'll see. Um... Marcus Tambeck, okay, they're talking about Freemasonry. Don't know anything about that. Uh, RNNN says, teleportation is dangerous. What if you teleported, what if one teleported themselves inside a rock or a wall? Well, that would just be Darwinism, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know, it's just an imaginary idea. Um, Ishtiak says, having kids is the hardest thing you do, and for me, was the best thing I ever did. Well, that's good to know. Um, uh, sorry. I keep skipping like all the way fucking down. Um, Ish says, new movie on Netflix, Extraction, Chris Hemsworth is doing his John Wick impression in Bangladesh. <laughs> well, I do love me some Chris Hemsworth, so it's been on my radar for a while. I might watch that tonight. Um, Marcus Tambic says, that is a shame, but thank you for the answer, Faye. Exploring uh, is life affirming. Yes, it is. And I hope you enjoy your time exploring Bengali culture. Um... Paul says, what ice cream do you like when you're sad? Can we send you a year supply? Uh, you're welcome to, but it will all melt because <laughs> my freezer is not that deep or big. Um, but I still have an Amazon wish list if you really want to buy me stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm open to accepting gifts. Um... I'm just looking down in the chat. Ish says, America is free, and that means freedom of expression, and that's why so many extreme beliefs flourish there. Hmm. I don't know. I think people take themselves and other people too seriously, and they need to stop. That's, that's the key, I think, to just peaceful living, is stop taking your lives and everyone else's lives so seriously. Life is meaningless and we're all gonna die. Just chill out. Molo says, hi, I'm a 21 year old girl. My dad was a deadbeat and had a bunch of kids. Long story short, I recently m meet on my half brothers and he is so cute and I have fallen in love with him. What the fuck do I do, girl? Help. Um, have a conversation. I think be open about it. I mean, personally, I don't judge. Like, you can fuck whoever you want. Um, something to consider is that genetic defects are a lot higher in from incestuous relationships. Um, so I would 
think about that before getting in a relationship with your half-brother. Um, but have a conversation about it. That's what I would say. See where it goes. I have, you know, best of luck. <laughs> Afro man says, if I get superpowers, I'll rob a bank. If I get cancer and I have s six months left to live, I'm robbing a bank. So let me know. Hit me up. <laughs> maybe we can, maybe we can plan a heist together. Um, um, tired llama, love you, babe. Love you too. Um, Julie Lavoie says, I completely agree with Faye and Ish on both points. Uh, Ish says, you plan to do DaveCon next year. Would love to buy you buy a drink for you, Ali Malik and Saf. Well, we would love to see you there. Unfortunately, it's been postponed because of the current season. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been completely postponed. But it would be lovely to meet some of you guys. And as far as I'm aware, tickets are still available. Dave hasn't really updated me on it. Uh, but, you know, it's up to you. Um, uh, C. Amur 5 says, what is the name of your favourite book or movie and why? I have, I have a problem picking favourites because my favourites change and shift a lot. When I was younger, my favourite movie was Braveheart and the reason it was Braveheart, um, The reason it was Braveheart is because it made me cry five times. And at that time, never used to cry. So now my sort of Richter scale for what a good movie is has definitely shifted. <laughs> now what a movie that is, I consider to be my favorite would be, sorry, uh, people don't know I'm trying to do a live stream here. Um, What I would consider to be a good movie is something that has a profound effect on me, is something that I take away from that movie. So what I would say is my favourite movies would be... Gladiator would be a top movie, top, top, top movie, because it. I, I love, first of all, love a revenge story, I think they're amazing. Second of all, I think I took away a lot of... Um, a lot of grieving advice from it if that makes sense like he had this I've mentioned this in other live streams and videos but um Maximus who's the main character in that story had this way of like remembering his family by keeping idols and um I've done that it's like what all the stuffed animals in my room are for they represent different members of my family that I miss and it was a way for me to get over that um, another movie that I would say is one of my favourite movies is Jurassic Park because I love dinosaurs. I've always loved dinosaurs. When I was younger I saw that movie and I so desperately wanted to become a paleontologist uh, and then I realised I don't have science brain um, so I can't do that. At least not uh, professionally. I can probably dig up my backyard and see what I can find but you know. <laughs> uh, another my favourite Disney, or like, no, my favourite animated movie is The Road to El Dorado. I think I saw it a thousand times, and I don't know, it's like one of the most underrated um, animated movies of all time. I love Prince of Egypt as well, but The Road to El Dorado, I, I watched that movie so many times as a child that at one point I knew every single word of that movie from start to finish. Um, Les Miserables was a movie that I watched incessantly after, well, the one with Hugh Jackman in it. Don't judge me, it is a very sentimental movie. <laughs> but I watched that movie incessantly during my mother's illness and after she died. It was, it, it felt, it, it felt nice <laughs> to be able to cry with some other people um, and understand, the, you know, it, it just felt like the movie understood me. Um, I don't know, I don't know, don't ask questions. Um, my favourite Disney movie, Disney princess movie would be Pocahontas. My favourite Disney movie of all time is Hunchback of Notre Dame because I feel that in here. <laughs> like, all of it. Um, in terms of my favourite books, my favourite classic, um, is, 
uh, Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy because I have never found myself less empathetic for a character and it really, really made me look into myself. It really, really made me look into myself. Um, my another close second is 1984. Love all of... He's probably my favourite writer. George Orwell is probably my favourite writer of all time. Um, he just speaks to me. I, I've always loved reading his work. Um, 1984 is a close second favourite. Uh, I loved Shakespeare growing up as well, so my favourite play, uh, favourite tragedy is Hamlet, favourite history is Richard III, and favourite comedy is Twelfth Night. Um, love Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, would not call it a favourite, it literally fucked up my English for ages because I, instead of reading a translation like a normal person, I decided I was going to read the original um, because I'm an idiot. Uh, but yeah, and my favourite thing in the whole fucking world of everything and anything is Berserk. It's my favourite thing of all time, ever. Um, I... Okay, moving on. Sorry. Uh, someone said inbreeding is immoral. I have a very hard time calling things moral and immoral. I think there's a time and a place, and I think that life's short, do whatever you want, don't care who you fuck, really, really don't. Um, not not my cup of tea, not something I would do, not something I would endorse, but also, do I care? Not really. Um, but I think my base rule is do no harm, and if you're doing no harm, you're doing no harm. That's it. Um, Ish says, sorry to be morbid, but I've been a bit down and ended up doing research on death and genocide. It was morbidly intriguing. It is morbidly intriguing. I had a phase where I was just watching documentaries about serial killers. I've had phases where I'll just research about um, factory farming and all the different practices around the globe. I had a phase soon after the coronavirus hit that I was just looking into wet markets for like days. It's, there's something about morbid curiosity and you know, you're like grossed out by everything, but it, it just, it fascinates you that a, that a group of human beings or one human being can do all of those things. Um, there's people talking about Ill incest, uh, Jen Doobie Noor says, even though I hate incest, uh, as far as there are no children and normal power dynamics, I admit I have no rational arguments against it. You don't... Okay, can I just say that not everything has to be an argument? <laughs> I do not care who you sleep with. <laughs> that is my rule for people sleeping with people. As long as you're consenting adults and you have, you're aware of your conditions, and, you know, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I really, really don't care. As long as everything is consensual and you are doing no harm, do not care who you sleep with. Literally, I have no, I, I have spoken to people of all kinds of sexual orientations, um, you know, all kinds of sexual taboos. I was, I have no problem with whoever you like to fuck, even if my best friend today, and it's not so far from the truth with Simon, but if my best friend today wanted to go fuck his sister, it would not change my opinion of him. It, I really do not care who someone fucks. It's, it's just, I, I don't care. <laughs> it does not have to be a rational. It's like, it's like people arguing over what type of food they eat. Like, it, it, I don't care. As you're not putting it in my mouth, I don't have to eat it. You can eat whatever the fuck you want. It's your body. Do not care. It, it's like people fighting over where they shit. You want to go shit in a bush? Go for it. You want to go wipe your ass with poison ivy? Go for it. I do not care. It's not my body. <laughs> I don't have to do it. It's fine. You do what you want with your body. Do not care. 
Um, sorry, I just I felt like I needed to run about that because I I'm always presented with this this argument of like oh you you atheists and you free thinkers you allow incest. <sighs> okay. Your religion allows genocide. Can we move on, please? We have bigger problems to worry about. Marcus Tanbeck says, Jurassic Park is such a great movie, a greedy billionaire cannot help himself and decide to grow elephant-sized meat-eaters in his theme park. Thank you, eccentric billionaire. You know what? Okay, when you say it like that, it sounds like a terrible idea. But also, which one of us wouldn't go to Jurassic Park if it was a real thing? I know I would go. Despite all of the risks and all of the warnings, I would still go. I want to see me some dinosaurs. I would die happy seeing some dinosaurs, okay? <laughs> um, Ish says, highly recommend Schindler's List, Sh Shawshank Redemption, and Nell. Uh, Nell and Schindler's List I still haven't seen, but Shawshank I have seen. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. Um, Mo says, it's just hard when you can't control. Sorry. That's what happens when I drink diet pepsi um it's just hard when you can't control your feelings with someone so close to you we never grew up together we are strangers low-key again you really want to do it go for it you feel weird about it don't do it like it's it's not that hard <laughs> it really isn't um Ish says, my favourite authors are Isaac Asimov, Terry Brooks. Terry Brooks is not a bad author. Uh, David Gamel, Lee Childs, Anthony Ryan. I haven't read anything by those people. I've seen their names, but I haven't read anything. Um, uh, Marcus Tanbeck says... On morality, I have a friend who was in the French Foreign Legion. The stories he has to tell makes you question morality. The world is a dangerous place. Judging things is tricky. The world is great. Exactly. Which is why I'd like words like morality and immorality, I just can't use loosely or flippantly because I feel like it's dangerous to, um, to assert something as a standard for everybody in all situations. It's just, it's, the world is not that simple. There are some things that I can say uh, I would 100% class as immoral, like enslaving another person. But would I say that selling yourself into slavery is immoral? No. I think that if you need to do that, you need to do that. Um, everything has a great area. Everything has a great area. Um, rape is completely immoral. Rape, I've thought about it for a very, very long time. That sounds awful, but let me explain. Um, I cannot find a justification for why you would rape somebody. So that is something that I would class as immoral. But other things like incest, come on. I'm sure someone can find a reason for doing that. <laughs> um, Ish says, I agree, don't have to always argue. Being critical doesn't mean being argumentative all of the time. Um, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, Marcus Tambeck says, I would go to Jurassic Park. See, like, everybody would go to Jurassic Park. It would be a sick journey. Um, Ishtiak Hussain says, the atheist community is so argumentative, needs more love. That's why I like Faye's channel and her fans. Yeah, I think that, like, we have a, a finite number of minutes, right, on this planet. Like, we have realised that there is no afterlife. We've denied the existence of a god, so even if there is an afterlife, we're not going to have a fun one. Um, you know, my philosophy is, is that if you're going to spend your whole life being miserable, what's the point of you living? Unless you enjoy being miserable, which means you're not miserable. You know, just, just have a good time. Just relax, kick back, just start taking everything just like a little less seriously because it's not that important and eventually it will all be over. I don't think that that's too hard of a concept to grasp and it gives me a significant level of comfort. Um, Julie LaVoice has stated some of her favourite um, authors, authors, playwrights, poets, um, Shakespeare, Stephen King. Uh, I've never actually read anything by Stephen King. I have a book somewhere by him that I just haven't read, um, but I need to. Neil Gaiman's good writer, Diana 
Gabaldon, haven't read anything by her, and a bunch of poets I can't think of right now. Oh, I forgot about poets. I think I used to love Robert Browning, um, and I like a lot of Victorian poets. Um, I'm just looking at the chat. Give me a second. Paul says, I wouldn't go to Jurassic Park. I know my luck. Luck schmuck. Uh, Laura Joseph says, wait, hold up. Why do you have to think about rape for so long? It's wrong, point blank. Some things aren't cut and dry like that. Because I think that... I like doing brain experiments. <laughs> I like thinking about stuff. So I was trying to go through like all of the major shit. Like I feel like you have, you can have a lot of reasons for killing someone, for example, like murder in self-defense, murder in, I don't know, eye for an eye situations. Like you can, you can justify murder, but can you justify rape? So I was sitting for a while, it was a few days actually, where I was sitting around and I was trying to think if that would ever be justifiable. And I just can't think of one. Maybe I'm not thinking hard enough. Maybe I'm not enough of a psycho, but to me, I would just class it as completely immoral. Um, can't think of a reason or a way that you could justify that. Sorry if that's weird. Um, uh, Rory says, I have a question. Okay, ask away. Um, Ish says, read the Jabberwocky after vodka or shrooms. I actually annotated and went through all of Alice in Wonderland <laughs> and then I left it behind in one of my houses. <laughs> um, Ish says, I've been on atheist channels and they're so eager to tear apart anything you say. Yeah, it's, it's so pointless. Like, I'm... Just have a beer. Chill the fuck out. Um, Paul says, Okay, rape is wrong, but why do women say they have that fantasy on date apps? It's weird. I'm not entirely sure where this rape fantasy comes from. Um, but, I mean... A, a kink is a kink. You like what you like, right? Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm going to close out in a little bit. Uh, if you have any final questions, let me know and I'll go over them. Um, I'm just checking Twitter really quickly. Uh, if you have any comments, have any concerns, I feel like I've said quite a few questionable things in this stream, um, feel free to expose me. Um, Nerdy is here. Welcome, Nerdy. Yes, I have a Witcher medallion. Uh, Witcher is one of my favourite things. So, yeah, I have, I bought it ages ago at a gaming convention. Um, I don't... I don't particularly, um, like the new Witcher medallion from the Netflix series, but I didn't think that that season was that bad. Thought it was quite good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It it made no sense to anyone who had never come across The Witcher, which I think was a problem because it was completely achronological. But I enjoy that. I enjoy a a, chronolo a chronology. Um, Laura Joseph says, Paul, it's more of a fetish type thing. I think in a safe environment place, rape is a traumatic crime. It definitely is more of a kink, uh, I guess. But yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Paul says, thanks Faye, during this quarantine your channel is a lot of help. I'm glad. That's what I intended it for. Um, Ish says, weird people have weird fantasies. It's not only women. Well, I mean, weird is a little far-fetched. I think that everyone has their own fantasies and I think it's fine as long as it's safe and consensual and, you know, all of that. Um, I've, I mean, I don't want to go into extreme detail, but I've I've slept with people who've had bizarre fantasies and I, I don't, <laughs> how much of my life am I giving out on the internet? How much of my life do I want to give out on the internet? I think that, I think that as long as you're 
open to ideas, you get to experience what other people like in a very open-minded way. Let's just say that. And um, I've, I've found that as long as you're okay with it, it's fine. It's not weird. It's not crazy. It's just, it's just what people like. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of changing my name. Any recommendations? What kind of name are you looking for? Um, Paul says, OkCupid okay has one of the one of their questions. Women who always answer say yes. I don't get it. I don't fucking know. Um, Julie Lavoie says, I liked how The Witcher played out. I haven't read the comic yet. I haven't read the comics yet either. Um, I want to. It's on my wish list. <laughs> Buy them for me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, I, I do want to read the comics. I've read all of the books. I have all of the books. I'm so glad I have all of the books. I'm so, I'm proud of that collection. Um, Nerdy says, my room is decked out with Witcher posters. Witcher is great. It's, it's one of the few stories that I fully, fully, fully enjoy. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's, 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 I have one poster of The Witcher, but I want to get more because I, I have a newfound respect for Yennefer that I, I always hated her. Always hated her. I hate her throughout the games. I hate her throughout the books. But the show has given me a completely new sort of respect for her. So now I want a Yennefer poster because I want to be Yennefer. <laughs> um, uh, Ish says, I'm old and traditional, but trying to be open. Just do what you're comfortable with. There's, there's also no problem with being old and traditional. There, there just isn't. Um, if that's what you like, that's what you like. I don't think you should, you should need to change that if you don't want to. Um, so yeah. Laura Joseph says, do you want to go to college? And if yes, uh, what? I'm currently in college slash university. Um, um, I, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I'm currently in university, so I've, I'm part of the Open University, with, which is a distance learning college because I work at the same time. <laughs> you go works two jobs and studies. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it, it's, I mean, I'm studying social psychology right now. It's difficult. I have one assignment left to do. It's due in a couple of days. I need to ask for an extension. Um, it's it's difficult because I don't have a science brain, but I do genuinely enjoy psychology and it is something that I want a degree in. Um, so that's what I'm studying. If I had the, if I had unlimited money and I, you know, could study whatever the hell I wanted, I would probably study everything in college. Um, because I love studying. I love learning things. I've always been a nerd for, for learning different things. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I learn for fun. I, I learn and I watch documentaries. I would love to learn about marine animals. I would love to learn uh, about English literature. I would love to learn about everything. <laughs> I love learning stuff. I just don't like being tested. Um, Paul says, did you... Uh, did you update your Amazon wish list? Got you something before? Want to see if there's anything new in it? Well, thank you for getting something for me before. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while, but I mean, there's still stuff on there. Um, if you want to. If you want to. Um, <laughs> uh, Nerdy Rodent says, I named one of my rats Yennefer. You know what? I really, really want to get a hamster. I've heard that Pets at Home is still open uh, during the quarantine, and I really, really want to just go and get a hamster. Should I just cave and go and get a hamster? I don't know. I don't know if I can, if I can afford it. Um, but yeah. <laughs> uh, jewelry bag says happy Ramadan. Happy Ramadan. Hope things are going well for you and things aren't too tough. Uh, in, you know, whichever country you're in, I hope you know, things are easy. I know quarantine can't be easy on anybody in this. Um, so yeah. Um, I think it's been over an hour, so I think I probably will close out. I think someone asked above if I would do another live stream today. 
Probably not, but I am gonna have quite a few conversations with some friends and just try to get out of my funk. Um, I I want to do some video recording today and see what comes of it, uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm doing today. Uh, Ish says, would love to see you on Shannon Q. Your story is fascinating, heartbreaking, but inspiring. Um, Oscar, just keep spamming her and see if she'll see if she'll bite. Um, hamsters bite, yes they do, but that's how they show love. Um, uh, don't get a hamster if you only have one room; it will stink all the time. Uh, rats are more snuggly. I want to just take care of something that's easy <laughs> and something preferably nocturnal. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know. I will figure it out. Um, but I do want to get like a little pet. I don't want to get a fish because I can't stroke a fish. Uh, I don't want to get a ferret because I feel like they'll need more space. How much space do rats need? I'll need to look it up. Ideally, I just want a dog. Okay, I just want a little dog that will scream and yap and love me forever until it dies prematurely because I'm a terrible fur mother. Um, but um, thank you for joining me. I hope you've had a good time. And um, I will hope to see you tomorrow, hopefully in a better mood and not so distracted uh, and not so brain foggy. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you enjoyed this, please do remember to like, share, subscribe. Um, we're trying to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so please do do that. Uh, we're very close to hitting 2,000, so if you have any ideas of what you would like me to do to celebrate, um, please do uh, please do let me know. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the ne in the next video. <laughs> Bye.